Um, first, I wanted just to say um, a few words in light of um, what's happened in the last few days. Um, we can't comment on any of the indications yet for us, and I'm sure, like many of you, you're still grappling with the um, effects, um, the impact of the referendum. Um, the Publishers for Development is um, fundamentally a forum that exists for international collaboration, sharing of expertise and experience and ideas. Um, and that's at the heart of everything which we do at INASP, um, and we remain very much committed to that. So that's the spirit of, um, of today and of all our other conversations with you. Um, it's great to see you all here. i figure out how to get this in a readable position. From the fact that you're all in the room today, um, I think I can safely assume that we share a common ambition, um, and that's that the research and knowledge systems of developing countries um, are strengthened, um, and in doing so can um, bring really important research knowledge to bear on some of the most pressing problems that um, uh, many people face, um, be they social, economic, environmental, um, or political. Um, but importantly as well that we are, we are here because um, we want to bring um, some change to bear. We, we want to make that a reality. Um, and we're committed to thinking about things differently and doing things differently to make that happen. I was going to ask you how many of you had heard of the, the Sustainable Development Goals. Um, Theresa's kind of beat me to it by giving you all a bit of a heads up. Um, so I think you've all, you've all looked at those now. Um, so at their simplest, the SDGs are the successor global goals to the Millennium Development Goals, the MDGs. Um, and you'll, you'll spot there some fairly familiar themes. So they talk about um, ending hunger, reducing poverty, um, tackling health, environment, education. But they also go quite a bit further than the MDGs did. So there were eight MDGs. There are 17 SDGs. Um, and we have 169 targets within the 17 goals. So they're both more ambitious and they're broader. Um, and there are many more issues and domains and sectors brought under that new global framework. Um, it's a framework which runs for the next 15 years until 2030. Um, and it's an important framework for how we organize our efforts internationally um, to achieve a more equitable, um, fairer, better world. They were also developed in a much more participatory way. So the MDGs were reputedly cooked up in the basement of the UN by a bunch of um, senior international civil servants and diplomats. The SDGs um, have been built by a participatory process. They've engaged um, civil society. They've engaged people in low- and middle-income countries. Um, there were over 5 million uh, participants to a big... Uh, UN-sponsored survey, so it's, it's been a very different exercise. They're also quite a bit different because the MDGs were essentially about what rich countries would do for poor countries, about rich countries giving aid to poor countries. And the SDGs are very different in that they are um, universal in their ambitions, and they basically say that everybody, every country has something to do here um, and changes to make. Um, and that there are lots of things that wealthy countries can do um, before they even think about um, giving money, um, which can help make a better world. So things like tackling tax evasion, um, reforming global trade regimes so that developing countries benefit more, um, more from trade and aren't so disadvantaged. And they emphasize a few other really important things as well. They emphasize leaving no one behind. So, um, getting to and improving the lives of what are often referred to as the hardest to reach people. So rather than just um, a numbers game where you, you um, achieve results by reaching people who are kind of easiest to lift out of, out of poverty or um, you can improve the health of, 
um, um, really getting to um, understand how we can uh, meet people's needs who are in really, really, really deep poverty and very hard to um, uh, find ways to help them improve their lives. And that shows we also need better data to do that as well, better ways of disaggregating what we know about improvements to people's lives and who they're reaching. They also say we need to um, have a more integrated approach. So um, the SDGs say that um, no single goal um, is more important than any other goal, and they all have to be achieved in concert if we're to um, really improve people's lives. And they also talk importantly about going beyond aid and saying there are other forms of financing for development. Um, and that's a big agenda, um, not just thinking about supporting developing countries and um, uh, meeting many of these goals through an aid relationship. But for us, what's also important is they say something very different about research and higher education than the MDGs did. So the MDGs um, implicitly required research knowledge and um, skills developed through research and higher education, but they weren't very explicit about the role of research and higher education to achieve that. Um, the SDGs have made that much more explicit. Um, so you can see here uh, in several goals um, in the targets which um, specify what needs to be done, there are explicit mentions of research, of science, of higher education. So uh, goal two, which um, is about ending hunger, um, achieving better food security, uh, improving nutrition, talks about the need for agricultural research. Um, goal four, which is about inclusive and quality education, explicitly mentions tertiary education, which is very new. Um, Goal seven, which is about affordable, sustainable energy, points to energy research being an important way to um, meet that goal. And goal number nine, which is about um, resilient infrastructure, sustainable industrialization, innovation, um, identifies the need to enhance scientific research um, and increase the numbers of researchers um, and increase investment in research in developing countries. Before I just change the slide, you'll notice number 17 is called Partnership for, for the Goals. Um, so it's a particularly important goal, and I think it speaks a lot to what we're trying to do here today. Um, so, it, so it says that in order to achieve these goals, we've got to build a global partnership and strengthen the existing partnerships. And the targets explain a bit more about what that means in practice. And they say that we need to respect each country's policy space and leadership um, so that it can establish um, and implement policies for development on its own terms. Um, it says we need to develop multi-stakeholder partnerships, very much what we're about here, um, that mobilize knowledge, expertise, technology, and finances. And then we have to promote partnerships between sectors. So we have to bring together the public sector, the private sector, and civil society in new ways. So there's a lot in that which is very relevant to here, um, to our, our conversation here today um, and why we're all in this room. It's really clear that if you want to solve complex problems in this world, um, big social environmental problems, you've got to bring people together, um, many diverse groups, and you've got to bring them together around a common goal. I think we've brought together some very diverse partners here today. We've got um, publishers of many different types and sizes. Um, we've got researchers um, in Zimbabwe and Uganda and Ghana. Um, we've got um, representatives of um, what we did, no we don't, libraries and librarians. Well, anyway, people who understand libraries. Um, and we have in, us, in the ACU and all of our networks of universities, um, research institutes in developing countries. Through our own networks, through all the people you're connected to back in your, um, uh, your companies and organizations, um, that makes that an even bigger network and a much more diverse group. Um, so we're primarily concerned here with access to research information. Um, a couple of years ago, we put together a series um, of principles. Um, suggestions for how we could work better together 
um, to actively support the national systems that are emerging or have emerged uh, in developing countries to improve and enable greater access to information. And we develop these principles with you, um, and we call them principles, not rules, because we, we understand that um, context and needs vary by country. And these were our five principles. Making the effort to understand the country context, respecting a country's wish to negotiate with, um, a consortium or as a purchasing club, not making sudden changes, thinking medium to long term on pricing, and being realistic about sales expectations. So what do these mean? Well, number one, understanding the country context. This means when you think of Ghana, think beyond Accra. If you think of Kenya, don't just think of Nairobi. Um, Addis Ababa, and you might have seen um, stories and images of a um, booming city with a new metro rail service. Addis um, is only part of Ethiopia. Um, and it doesn't tell you the whole story about the country and its research needs and its infrastructure um, and its skills and its resources. So that means thinking, to, thinking about second and third and fourth cities, rural areas, and you're thinking of a country and trying to develop your understanding. Number two, respecting countries wish to negotiate as a purchasing consortium. Um, This means that where leaders in a country um, have come together, leaders in universities and research institutions, um, and they've worked really hard to build um, a consortium of university libraries and research libraries, um, we really urge you to um, recognize that and work with them rather than working around them because it won't always be smooth, and we absolutely recognize that. It won't be the easiest of journeys all the time, but it's the right way to go if you, want to, if you really want to um, help to uh, support countries to achieve their own national goals um, on their own terms. Number three, not making sudden changes. This means opening a conversation as early as possible if you want to change the way you do things um, with a country or with institutions in a country. Um, if you want to um, make any changes to terms and conditions and prices. Um, so if you're thinking about moving towards direct relationships and away from access initiatives, um, let them plan ahead, give them plenty of notice. And we're talking three to five years here, that's the kind of time frame. Number four, thinking medium to long term um, on pricing, it's really important. Um, no sudden changes. Um, it, takes, it takes time to prepare for um, increases in budget. And number five, being realistic about sales expectations. It's quite easy to be seduced by stories of um, um, Africa rising. Um, and there's huge things, huge, impressive, important things happening on the continent. Um, but if a country makes some new investments in its research and tertiary system, um, don't imagine that there's a bigger budget next year or even the year after. Um, because these are big, strange systems which have been underinvested in for many years. Um, many, many challenges to tackle, infrastructure, facilities, skills, um, and student numbers are rapidly um, growing and outpacing um, these investments in the university system. So last year we um, invited you to discuss these principles with us, um, and we were really pleased um, to have such a broad agreement about them, that they were important, and they were doable, and they were achievable. Um, you also asked us to think about the other side of the equation. So we were asking you to do some things. And you were saying, well, what about the um, library consortia and the institutions we work with? Um, and so we, we recognized that. Um, and we started a conversation with our partners. Um, and Anne will tell you more about that later on today. We've got some principles here, but we need to put them into practice. Um, and that's the big question for us all here today. So what have you all been doing since this time last year um, to uh, turn these principles into a um, guide for the way you do business? Um, what have you found in the process? What hasn't been easy? Um, what's gone well? We also know that um, it's really important to um, 
not just to understand the principles, but to keep a conversation going about why they're important. And that's why we're here today as well. Um, and that's about hearing from the organisations which we work with and which are um, striving to develop research, striving to um, improve the ability of their countries to harness knowledge, harness science, and harness skills to achieve development. Um, I could give you lots of examples of that. Um, how research is solving really critical problems, um, food security, climate change, um, bringing evidence to bear in national policy processes. And access to information is underpinning all of that. But I think it's much, much better if I give way to some of the people who can talk to you um, from their immediate experience. Um, and we've got some partners here today with us um, who can do just that. Thank you very much. Thanks very much, John. Thanks very much, John.